It's January 16th, 1974 in Pittsburgh, USA. You head out buzzing with anticipation, clutching tickets to see the one and only Fleetwood Mac. They're on tour promoting their upcoming eighth studio album, Mystery to Me. The lights go down, the crowd comes alive, and onto the stage walks not Fleetwood Mac. Imposters. Musicians claiming to be Fleetwood Mac. Your eyesight hasn't failed you. This is the story of how a fake Fleetwood Mac embarked on a major US tour in the 70s. Hi, I'm Adam. Welcome back to Music Mongoose. When you think of Fleetwood Mac, you probably think of the Rumours era of the late 70s. After all, Rumours was their most successful album. 40 million copies sold worldwide, making it the 12th best-selling album of all time. And when you think of that album, you probably think about the arguments, the drugs, and the affairs that went on during the recording process. Safe to say, they had their fair share of squabbles. But many people don't know about an equally tumultuous time a few years earlier, which also featured fights, drugs, and affairs. The original members of Fleetwood Mac were Peter Green, Jeremy Spencer, John McVie, and Mick Fleetwood, joined soon after by Danny Kerwin. In 1971, Peter Green and Jeremy Spencer were the first to leave the band. Peter left for a myriad of personal and drug-related issues and ended up having an lsd fueled mental breakdown and sleeping on the streets. And Jeremy Spencer left the band to join a cult called the Children of God in Los Angeles. Seriously. So, you know, totally normal, healthy reasons to step away from a band. A year later, after a heated argument between Danny Kerwin and the band involving refusal to go on stage and the smashing of a guitar, Danny Kerwin was fired from Fleetwood Mac. In 1993, Kerwin was tracked down to a homeless shelter in London, where he'd been living for four years. I don't know who'd be stupid enough to want to join the band at this point. It seems like you get cursed just for stepping foot into it. Ah, well, Christine McVie decided to join along with two Bobs, Welch and Weston, neither of which were builders. Oh. Welch, replacing Danny Kerwin, played on the albums Penguin and Mystery to Me. And at this point, it's back to the intro and that fateful 1974 American tour to promote Mystery to Me. Now, Bob Weston took a strong liking to a lady named Jenny Boyd, a former model, manager of an addiction treatment center and author of two books. She was also the younger sister of model and photographer Patty Boyd, George Harrison's first wife. Through her connection to Patty, Jenny became well acquainted with stars like The Beatles and Eric Clapton. And she even proved to be somewhat of a muse for certain artists, reportedly having songs written about her by Donovan and Mick Jagger. So, as you can see, a fairly special lady. No wonder Bob Weston was interested in her. They had a fling in late 1973 and early 74 during this American tour. The only slight issue with this is that Jenny was very much married to Mick Fleetwood at the time. Ah yes, the famous Fleetwood Mac affairs. Don't we just love them? On the tour, this became known and Mick Fleetwood became proper pissed off. After a show in Lincoln, Nebraska, with the emotional stress rising and rising, Mick Fleetwood finally cracked. He put Bob onto a plane, sent him back home to England, and he cancelled the rest of the tour. They still had 26 shows scheduled. Clifford Davis did not like this. He didn't like this at all. The band's manager reportedly said in a conversation to Fleetwood, if you blow this tour, you'll never get another chance. Despite the warnings, Mick removed himself from the situation and the remaining band members followed suit, going on a hiatus of sorts. Not ideal, really, when you're midway through a tour, but that was that. The band weren't physically able to play and weren't even in the country, so the tour was cancelled and the remaining tickets were refunded. Except that's not what happened, because now we venture into the eccentric mind of Clifford Davis, manager of Fleetwood Mac. He fancied himself as a bit of a puppet master when it came to the band. In his mind, he owned the band and he owned the name Fleetwood Mac. I've always been the leader of the band as much, he stated. And by his reckoning, he could legally choose to hire and fire band members to play under the name Fleetwood Mac as he chose fit. And he did. He contacted the members of a band called Legs, 
which to this day are only really known for that one time they impersonated Fleetwood Mac on a tour of America in the 1970s. They would go on to form a new band called Stretch, and found success with a single called Why Did You Do It? A song about Mick Fleetwood and Clifford Davis deceiving them to impersonate Fleetwood Mac on a tour of America in the 1970s. Are you keeping up? Under Clifford's wise watch, Legs were sent out to tour America, filling in for the real band under the pseudonym The New Fleetwood Mac. They were told that the actual members of the band would join them once the tour had started, which, of course, they didn't. The ruse fell apart on the first performance in Pittsburgh. The show began as planned. Fans, however, immediately realised this was not the band they had bought tickets to see, and demanded refunds. It was much the same story at the next stop in New York. However, as if things couldn't get worse, the vocalist of Legs, sorry, I mean the new Fleetwood Mac, Elmer Gantry, lost his voice, which meant the entire second half of the gig was instrumental, with no lead vocal. So not only did fans turn up to see a band they didn't pay for, the lead vocalist couldn't even perform. Upon catching wind of what the bloody hell was happening here, the real Fleetwood Mac filed lawsuits against their manager Clifford Davis to stop it. Davis countersued, and it would turn into a four-year long battle to decide who rightfully owned the rights to the name Fleetwood Mac. One silver lining from all of this, though. Because the legal disputes were in American courts, the band decided to relocate to America while it all went on. There, they would find colossal success in recording ten or so more studio albums, but also, you know, more fighting and drugs and affairs and stuff. Speaking of controversial band decisions, do you know the story of when Pink Floyd grounded flights at Heathrow Airport because of a 40-foot inflatable runaway pig? Click the video on screen for that one, and let me know what story from the music world you'd like to see next. I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose.